So, uh, I would like to present a title, a, a contribution with the title Microstructure and Directional Fatigue Behavior of Inconel 718 produced by selective laser melting. This contribution was prepared in the cooperation between University of Zilina in Slovakia, the University of Parma in Italy, and uh, Institute of Physics of Materials in Brno in Czech Republic. Uh, I will speak about uh, metal additive manufacturing uh, technologies. And uh, this uh, technique is uh, now very often used for uh, special products which are not possible to prepare uh, with conventional method as uh, melting or, or forming. Uh, we can divide these technologies to, uh, to uh, possibilities. One is uh, powder bed technologies and second group is powder deposition technologies. This can be divided in principle like laser, engineering net shaping, direct metal deposition or laser cladding. And this first is uh, from uh, my uh, results. Uh, and so it's uh, laser beam melting, electron beam melting or material jetting process. And uh, here we have two possibilities, but they are in the principle the same. Uh, it's selective laser melting. This will be my uh, production uh, products and direct metal laser sintering. Uh, here we can see scheme of uh, production. And uh, so uh, here is the detail from uh, this scheme. There is uh, the layer of powder and laser pink in this direction is uh, melting, uh, melting powder. Uh, here is shown uh, the principle when the powder is completely melted. They are used uh, an interbium fiber laser in most cases. Here we can, uh, we can see several uh, chosen products which uh, have a very complex shape. And uh, uh, producer use or EOS, concept laser, SLM solutions, or uh, as it, in our case, it was Renishaw system. Uh, so uh, we know that um, SLM materials exhibit usually comparable tensile strength properties as conventionally prepared materials. Fatigue properties as fatigue life, fatigue limit, and crack propagation are often worse. The fatigue properties are influenced by many processing parameters of SLMS like laser power, laser, uh, layer thickness, or type of scanning. And there are also several uh, possibilities. So, the aims of uh, our study uh, are investigation of the fatigue behavior of Inconel 718 produced by SLM. And uh, we need to examine uh, several parts in the first is description and analysis of material microstructure, then experimental determination of fatigue life, uh, investigation of crack initiation and fractographic analysis, and also influence uh, of residual stresses. Uh, uh, here uh, we can see uh, atomized powder of Inconel 718 with a granulometry in the, in the range uh, from uh, 24 to 53 microns. Chemical composition is shown in this table. And uh, process system is this uh, Renishaw 8250 uh, system, iterbium fiber laser with wavelength uh, of uh, 1075 nanometers and laser power of 200 watts. Uh, layer thickness was uh, 30 microns. After uh, uh, production, 
uh, the, the product was uh, stress relieved and it was used in treatment uh, with this uh, temperature and after it was uh, applied age hardening at these uh, two temperatures and times. Uh, for our testing, uh, we used uh, miniature fatigue specimens, which are shown here, and uh, they have special design, uh, which, is, which we can find described by Nicoletto in International Fatigue Journal. Here is shown the small size, and uh, it was used cycling in plain bending with R ratio equal zero. And tensile stress amplitude uh, was applied on the flat surface opposite to the, to the notch in all cases. So here are three different orientations according uh, this uh, axis. Uh, here uh, we can see 3D microstructure of our uh, material and uh, the microstructure was uh, etched with two different uh, etching agents because uh, like this we can uh, observe uh, more uh, details than with only one. So here we can see very good uh, elongated uh, grains because this is shown build direction. And uh, here on this, um, on this uh, 3D microstructure here is uh, these arrows uh, indicate uh, stress orientation which was applied on the, on the plates. Uh, here is a detail from a lateral uh, plane uh, and uh, it's better now to observe these elongated grains. The uh, top of, uh, of this scheme is shown in the detail here, there is uh, this is this uh, plane x y, and in the uh, details we can see a uh, gamma prime matrix, vague globular shape, and in the detail here we can observe neo bridge precipitates, which are located on the grain boundaries and also inside the grains. Uh, on this picture uh, we can see. Uh, in uh, velar curves, in uh, uh, SN, uh, SN dependence, uh, results of uh, plain, uh, plain bending uh, on three different uh, specimens. This specimen orientation A, orientation B, and orientation C. Uh, what we could uh, see from these uh, three curves that there is an influence of the build orientation on the fatigue life because orientation of specimen C, which is here, exhibits worse properties than the orientation E and B. Uh, here are schemes where we can see how the uh, specimen was prepared and where is the reason of this different behavior. If we have specimen A and B, so then track propagates perpendicularly to the build direction and if we have uh, this C orientation uh, then uh, uh, crack propagates parallel to the build direction uh, parallel to the build direction between layers so it means that uh, crack can uh, easily uh, propagate so, uh, for, crack, uh, for crack initiation, I show here two examples because it's similar A and B. Here in the circle we can see uh, some defect, cast, uh, well, defect. and uh, here in this case uh, C, we can see that on the, on the top there are some not melted uh, small uh, particles. And uh, so we can conclude that fatty crack start on the specimen surface uh, in uh, all cases on the place where surface defect or irregularities occur. Uh, here uh, I, will sh uh, I want to show influence of fracture surface roughness and uh, specimen A show almost flat surface. Uh, 
uh, for specimen B, we see some small irregularities, but uh, in C, there are many, many irregularities. So again, we can, uh, again, we can conclude uh, as built surface roughness of the specimens C is the highest, and uh, surface with uh, partially melted powder particle is typical for the loading surface of the specimen C. Uh, here we perform uh, a surface measurement of surface roughness of plan according to production orientation of specimens. And here from this measurement we can see uh, low roughness for A and similar for B. But for orientation C, there are uh, very different uh, roughnesses. So uh, results are comp uh, com completely uh, shown in this uh, table, and the lowest value is for specimen A, and B is form almost similar. So uh, for uh, residual stresses, it is the last point, generally, uh, res residual stresses are present every time in as fabricated specimens. Heat treatment of SLR products is, uh, is recommended, and then the presence of residual stresses may influence the fatigue behavior. However, it, in this study, we show that the specimen that stress relief heat treatment at the 970 degrees for one hour, and also then age hardening. Uh, X-ray uh, determination of residual stresses was performed using uh, uh, sinus uh, C squared method on all three orientation of specimens A, B, and C. And uh, uh, we can say that uh, it has been found that the residual stresses in longitudinal and transversal directions in all three types of specimens are small and do not exceed principal stresses, uh, compression 500 uh, megapascals and shear stress uh, uh, 20 megapascal. So, uh, the conclusion for this study is that residual stresses cannot be the reason for the observed different fatigue life. So, uh, now I can say uh, conclusions from our study that the microstructure of Inconel 718 prepared by SLM exhibits directionality as regards to the specimen orientation. The high cycle fatigue life of specimens depend uh, the orientation of microstructure relative to the acting cyclic load. The worst fatigue performance was observed for specimen in which the fatigue crack initiates on the surface with the highest roughness and when crack propagates along the big layers. And the last, the applied post-processing in treatment removed the residual stresses. Thank you for your attention.